episode of Vet Talk. I'm Brother Vince and I'm an Army veteran. And today we will be talking about eligibility for burial in the VA National Cemetery. But before we get into that, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can find more content from Vet Talk on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Reddit for more content. And to all veterans who love to share your stories, a resource for veterans and non-veterans who love to share your resource for veterans, please contact me ASAP so we can schedule a meeting. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get into this topic. So again, we're talking about eligibility for burial in the VA National Cemetery. So on my screen, man, you can see the eligibility for burial in the VA National Cemetery. As always, I like to read this for all my VA listeners. Veterans, service members, and some family members may be eligible for burial in a VA National Cemetery. Find out if you are a person you're planning for a burial can get this benefit. Who's eligible for a burial in the VA National Cemetery? Veterans, service members, spouses, and dependents may be eligible for burial in the VA National Cemetery, as well as other benefits. If they meet one of these requirements, one of these must be true. The person qualifying for a burial benefit is a veteran who did not receive a dishonorable discharge, or the person qualifying for the burial benefit is a service member who died while on active duty, active duty for training, or inactive duty for training, or the person qualifying for burial benefits is the spouse of a surviving spouse of a veteran, even if they remarried after the veteran's death, or the person qualifying for the burial benefit is the minor child of a veteran, even if this veteran died first or, in some cases, the unmarried adult-dependent child of a veteran. Eligibility information for specific groups. So the first group is U.S. citizens who serve in the armed forces of any government ally with the United States during a war. A U.S. citizen who served in the armed forces of the U.S. allied during wartime may be eligible if they meet both of these requirements. Both of these must be true. The service member ended their last active service honorably by death or otherwise, and the service member was a U.S. citizen at the time they entered their last active service and at the time of their death. Members of reserve components are the Reserve Officer Training Corps. A National Guard or reserve member may be eligible if they meet any of these requirements. At least one of these must be true. The National Guard or reserve member met their legal minimum active duty service requirement, was called up to active duty, and served their full term of service, and did not receive a dishonorable discharge. Or... The National Guard of Reserve member was entitled to retirement pay at the time of death or would have been entitled to retirement pay if they were under 60 years of age at the time of death or the National Guard of Reserve member died while hospitalized or getting treatment at the expense of the U.S. for an injury or illness that occurred while they were performing active duty services for training or inactive duty training under honorable conditions, or the National Guard or Reserve member became disabled or died from a disease or injury caused or made worse by their service during a period of active duty for training, or the National Guard or Reserve member became disabled or died from an injury or certain cardiovascular disease caused or made worse by their service during a period of inactive duty training. Members of the Reserve Officers Training Corps of the Army, Navy, or Air Force. A member of the Reserve Officer Training Corps may be eligible if they meet any of these requirements. One of these must be true. The officer died under honorable conditions while attending an off the rise training camp or on an off the rise cruise, or the officer died under honorable conditions while performing off the rise travel to 
are from a training camp or cruise or the officer died under honorable conditions while hospitalized or getting treatment at the expense of the United States for an injury or illness that occurred while they were attending or traveling to training camps or cruise under honorable conditions. Commission officer of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The commission officer of the National Oceanic or Atmospheric Administration may be eligible if they meet any of these requirements. At least one of these must be true. The officers serve on full-time duty on or after July 29th, 1945, or the officer served before July 29th, 1945, and was assigned to an area of immediate military hazard as determined by the Secretary of Defense while in time of war or by a national emergency as declared by the President, or the officer served in the Philippine Islands on December 7th, 1941, and continued to serve there until their death. Commission Officers of Public Health Services. Commission Officer of Public Health Service. A Commission Officer of the Public Health Service may be eligible if they meet at least one of these requirements. One of these must be true. The officers serve on full-time duty on or after July 29th, 1945. If their service was considered active duty for training, they must have become disabled or died from a disease or injury caused or made worse by their service. The officer performed full-time duty prior to July 29, 1945 in a time of war or on detail for duty with the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guard or while a part of the military forces of the United States by executive order of the president. The officers served on inactive training and their death resulted from an injury caused or made worse by their service. World War II Merchant Mariners. A World War II Merchant Mariner may be eligible if they meet at least one of these requirements. One of these must be true. The Merchant Mariner had ocean going service during the period of armed conflict from December 7th, 1941 to December 31st, 1945. All the Merchant Marina had ocean going service during a period of armed conflict from December 7th, 1941 to December 31st, 1946, and died after November 11th, 1998. Or the Merchant Marina served on block ships in support of the Operation Mulberry during World War II. To get a DD-214 documenting this service, mail an application to this address in Washington, D.C. Philippine Armed Force Veterans. A Philippine Armed Force Veteran may be eligible if they meet these requirements. Both of these must be true. The Philippine Veteran was a citizen of the United States or alien lawfully admitted to permanent residence in the United States at the time of their death, and the Philippine veteran residing in the United States at the time of their death. And one of these must be true. The Philippine veteran served before July 1st, 1946 in the Philippine military, including recognized guerrilla forces. While these forces were in the service of the armed forces of the United States and died on or after November 1st, 2000, or the Philippine veteran enlisted between October 6, 1945 and June 30th, 1947 with the armed forces of the United States with the consent of the Philippine government and died on or after December 16, 2003. A hung veteran may be eligible if they meet all of these requirements. All of these must be true. The hung veteran died on or after March 23rd, 2018. And the hung veteran resided in the United States at the time of death. And the hung veteran was naturalized under Section 2, Part 1 of the Hung Veteran Naturalizations Act of 2000, also called the 2000 Act. What burial benefits does the home veteran qualify for? The home veteran are eligible for burial in a national or private cemetery. They're also eligible for a headstone 
arm marker, but not for other memorial items like a burial flag or presidential memorial certificate or for military funeral honors like the playing of taps. Spouses and surviving spouses of hung veterans aren't eligible for interment or any other burial benefits, even if they were naturalized under the 2000 Act. What public law 115-141? What's public law 115-141? Public law 115-141 allows eligible home veterans to be buried in a national cemetery. Be sure to refer to when requesting burial benefits. When you call the National Cemetery Scheduling Office in your time of need, tell the scheduler you're requesting interment under PL 115-141. When you're filling out VA Form 40-1007, application for pre-need determination of eligibility for burial in the VA National Cemetery, please write PL 115 141 and block 5. Write the certification of naturalization registration A number in block 6 and select other in block 13. We're requesting a headstone or marker or barrier in a private cemetery using VA form 40 1330. Write PL 115 141. And the certification of naturalization registration A number in block 33. Specific groups that aren't eligible. Certain family members. These fallen members aren't eligible. A former spouse who isn't also a veteran who marries to an eligible veteran or service member ended by annulment or divorce. Family members of a veteran convicted of subversive activities unless the veteran receives a pardon from the president of the United States. Other family members who do not meet the eligibility requirements. People who were drafted but never into the military service. People aren't eligible if they were ordered to report to an induction station but were discharged at that point and never actually entered the military service. Veterans with a certain character of discharge. Veterans are eligible if they separated from the armed service under dishonorable conditions or have a character of service that disqualified them. A VA regional office determination eligibility in cases where the veteran has an undesirable bad conduct or any type of discharge other than honorable or multiple discharges of varying characters. Veterans found guilty of capital crime. Veterans are eligible if they've been convicted of federal or state capital crimes and may receive a sentence of imprisonment for life or the death penalty, and the conviction is final, or clear of convincing evidence shows that they've committed a federal or state capital crime, but they couldn't have a trial due to flight to avoid persecution or death. These veterans also don't qualify for a presidential memorial certificate, burial flag, headstone, or marker. Veterans convicted of certain sexual offenses. Veterans aren't eligible if they were convicted of a tier three sex offense and sentenced to a minimum of life imprisonment and the conviction is final. These veterans do not qualify for a presidential memorial certificate, burial flag, headstones, or marker. Veterans convicted of subversive activities. Veterans are eligible if they were convicted of subversive activity after September 1st, 1959, unless they receive a pardon from the President of the United States. What to do if I receive an other than honorable bad conduct or dishonorable discharge? If you receive one of these status, you may not be eligible for VA benefits. There are two ways you can try to qualify. So you can click on this right here and you can find out if you are eligible. 
are ways for you to qualify by clicking on either one of these boxes. And if you want more information about the VA burial benefits and planning, you can click, can I be buried in an Arlington National Cemetery? You can click on what does burial in a VA National Cemetery include? And you can also click on, can I plan ahead for my burial in a VA National Cemetery? So I just really wanted to go over all of this important information for those who may need it. Because again, I want to ensure that those who are out there who may be eligible for burial in the VA Na National Cemetery, they get their documents and ducks in a row and they can do so with the proper information. So as always, man, this has been another episode with your boy, brother Vince Vet Talk. My good people, Vet Talk out.